At the moment, there's a lot of talk about UFOs or, or UAPs as they're now being called. Unidentified aerial phenomenon. A lot of it's going to be heated, emotional, and probably controversial. So I don't need to hype things up in this video. In fact, we may need to put a damper on the emotional aspects in order to take a calm and more rational look at the implications of what is going down with regard to UAPs in American airspace. After roughly 70 years of speculation about flying saucers and other unidentified flying objects, the US government has now come out publicly and admitted that such aircraft exist, and that at least some sightings have been officially verified. Listen to former President Barack Obama with talk show host James Corden just a few days ago. There's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. We can't explain uh, how they moved, their trajectory, now, the US government stresses that they don't have conclusive proof that these phenomena are of extraterrestrial origin, but neither do they have proof for any other theory about what they are or who is controlling them. What they do know is that someone has access to technology that would make a mockery of our present understanding of the laws of physics. Imagine a technology that can do six to seven hundred g-forces that can fly at 13,000 miles an hour, that uh, it can evade radar, and that can fly through air and water and possibly space, and oh by the way has no obvious signs of propulsion, no wings, no control surfaces, and yet still can defy the natural effects of Earth's gravity. These vehicles seem to have unlimited loiter time, which we don't have. We're limited in terms of, of altitude. It's hard to design something that functions well at ground level that can go, you know, to 60,000 or 80,000 feet. And then drop. And then, and yeah, and then drop down to the deck or drop to 20,000 feet, and you know, and it's like a straight vertical line. In seconds? Yeah, in seconds. And this has been captured on radar? Yeah. Then the acceleration is beyond any, far beyond anything that we, that we're capable of. So What's the, the fastest one of our jets can go? Probably for a very brief period of time, uh, 1,500 or 2,000 miles an hour. Um, nothing near the degree of acceleration that has been observed in some of these cases. There's nothing we could build that would be strong enough to endure that amount of force and acceleration. Three possible explanations have been given for what has been observed. One is that the U.S. itself has been doing research with some very advanced form of transportation and trying to keep it secret. Because the government is now admitting that such technology exists, it's also being frank in admitting that this is far beyond the capabilities of any technology available to the U.S. military at the moment. The Pentagon admits it doesn't know what in the world this is. Or this. Or this. Christopher Mellon served as Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence for Presidents Clinton and George W. Bush and had access to top secret government programs. So it's not us. That's one thing we know. We know that. I could say that with a very high degree of confidence, in part because of the positions I held in the department, and I know the process. The second theory is that Russia or China or some other country has discovered ways to fly the skies that are being used to spy on us. Now, that theory, however, would have to assume that these countries would not use that technology to hurt the US in any way. And it's very difficult to believe that after seven years of speculation, that no one in any of those countries would have been tempted to do at least a little bit of mischief with the incredible knowledge that they've possessed for all these past 70 years. So that brings us to the third theory, the one that is so astounding as to pose a threat of panic if we all had to face it suddenly and at the same time. Only the fact that these unidentified, whatever they are, have not hurt anyone for so many decades would give us reason to not be alarmed. And the fact that we have only gradually been allowed to hear what the government knows has given the human race several decades in which to adjust to what is now being openly accepted as fact. So in this video, I would like to discuss the implications of there being life forms out there which would make our most advanced technology seem to be Stone Age by comparison. We, as humans, have reveled in the fact that we are, at least by our estimation, the smartest creatures in the solar system, if not the entire universe. 
Scientists tell us that they have a pretty good understanding about how the universe came to be, and that the masses on this planet should trust them and their superior intellect to explain our existence. Talk of God, of miracles, of Jesus ascending into another dimension in the heavens, of a prophesied return with a host of heavenly angels, all of that, they have told us, is just silly superstition, the wild inventions of primitive minds. Now we may have to rethink all of that. And before we even begin to consider whether these aerial sightings represent friends or enemies, we need to consider our own position in the intelligence rankings. The Bible says, Who is man that you, God, are mindful of him, and the son of man that you have visited him, for you have made him a little lower than the angels? Consider that. A little lower than the angels. Who are these angels that the psalmist is talking about? Whatever they are, the Bible tells us that they are a little higher than us humans. Now, some of our brightest minds don't like to think of anyone being smarter than us. But now we know that someone, something, is smarter than us. A lot smarter. And it's not just a story in a book now. They are out on our doorstep. Superior intelligence, flying regularly, almost routine missions, and showing off their far superior maneuverability in the air. Who knows what they're capable of in other areas? Day after day for nearly two years, U.S. Navy pilots would encounter this unidentified aerial phenomena, or UAP, while flying off the coast of Florida. I don't see an exhaust plume. No exhaust plumes, no markings, no wings, but caught on a U.S. Navy camera in 2014 and verified this year by the Pentagon. There was four of us in the airplanes literally watching this thing for roughly about five minutes. The Pentagon says this night vision video was taken by Navy personnel and is being investigated. Unusual sightings like this one continue to occur and be captured on video. We traditionally picture angels with wings. But what about wings that have angels? You see, we have another description in the book of Ezekiel which goes further. Ezekiel said that there was a great whirlwind and a fire enfolding itself, and then something like four living creatures appeared to come out of the fire and the wind. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went, everyone straight forward. Whither the spirit was to go, they went. The living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Another crew managed to briefly lock onto it with a targeting camera before it zipped off again. Ezekiel continues, As I beheld the living creatures, behold, one will upon the earth by the living creatures. Their appearance and their works was, as it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides. As for their rings, their rings were full of eyes round about them four. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. For the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. It says more, but that is enough for now. What Ezekiel was describing still defies the picture. Ezekiel's vision has baffled Bible experts for centuries. He saw something that could not be described with any words that he had available at the time. Nevertheless, God spoke to Ezekiel out of this strange apparition. And this is the main thing I want to focus on. Throughout history, at significant times, God has continued to speak. And He is speaking to the world even now, if only we would listen. Now, we each have the daunting task of discerning which, if any, of the people claiming to be speaking on behalf of God really is telling us what our Creator wants us to know. So far, our history has been one of the masses, including the religious masses, rejecting the truth and embracing lies. Comforting lies, but lies nonetheless. I believe that is happening today as well. The first thing that God told Ezekiel was that the people would not believe him. 
and you can be pretty sure that the masses are also going to miss the message now. So let's look at what we, the human race, are being confronted with at the moment. By that, I mean, let's look at these UAPs. Even if we were to rename them unidentified angelic phenomenon, the big question is not what they are, so much as whether they are friends or enemies. Following the wings with angels theory, they could be piloted by good angels, part of the so-called heavenly host that will accompany Jesus when he returns, or they could be under the control of fallen angels, a deception from the evil one who will use them to usher in the coming Antichrist world leader. For me personally, I take comfort in just knowing that, good or bad, such creatures, or machines if you like, do exist. If fallen angels are out there somewhere, then so are the good angels. It's also good to know that the world is closer to being forced to deal with the implications of an intelligence much higher than our own. Another Bible prophet, John the Revelator, saw a vision too. He said that he saw what he called two wings of a great eagle that will one day carry a remnant of faithful believers into a place that John called the wilderness, where they are nourished for three and a half years away from the face of the serpent, the devil. There is growing concern among professing Christians about what is coming upon the earth. Unfortunately, most of them have been irrationally deceived by dozens of other distractions and many useless human efforts to save themselves. But the Bible says that a tiny remnant will be protected miraculously by God during the coming Great Tribulation. And they will get this special treatment because, and only because, they have followed the Lamb, that's Jesus, wherever He goes. Where is that happening today? Forget your fallout shelters, your stockpiles of food and weapons. Forget your foolish fears about masks and vaccines and flat earth and chemtrails and your insipid teachings about how to spell Jesus' name, about what day of the week to go to church on, about whether there is one God or three, about when and how to baptize people with water, and about which church is the right one. We need to walk away from all that nonsense and start listening to Jesus himself, believing him and following him, even to death, if that is part of his plan. What I see in these new revelations about flying saucers, or wheels within wheels, super smart beings in unidentified aerial phenomenon, or whatever else you want to call them, what I see, and what I think we all need to see, is that we are not alone. The God who has made us, has made others, a little higher than us, who will help him to look after those chosen few, those who have chosen to give up everything in obedience to his Son, Jesus. It's all about Jesus, friends, a very real, historic, flesh and blood human being who was conceived by the Creator of the universe and sent here for the express purpose of telling us how to live. It's time for us to start giving Him the respect and worship that He so much deserves. Time is running out. Are you prepared to stop trying to do it your own way, whether that be an inflated faith in atheistic science, or an inflated faith in false religious leaders and false religious teachings, or an inflated faith in your own ability to go it alone. It's time to leave all and fall on our faces before God, begging for His guidance in these difficult times, and in the far more difficult times that lie ahead. Please write to me if you'd like to be put in touch with others in your area of the world, who have been preparing for this period in Earth's history for a few years now. Let me know what country you live in and share a little about your own spiritual journey while you're at it. Thank you for listening. God bless you.